Well, I tell you, I really got a blessing out of uh, putting together. The, I always get a blessing out of it. I'll be honest with you. And I, uh, my mom was telling me not long ago, she, um, I think Terry had edited down one of our segments, and I'd reposted it, and some folks had liked it and what have you. And mom had mentioned you'd be surprised some of the, the things that the hymn writers went through. And I noticed, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, many of these songs are about heaven and eternity. And I got to thinking about it. You know, back in the Great Depression and those, that era and even before that, you know, I mean, folks were living hand to mouth. They didn't, they had to be thinking about eternity. Uh, the days, and the Bible says even the days we live in, the days are evil. But this hymn writer is a really, was a really good study. Uh, and I hope everybody's got a copy of the uh, music there. We'll try to sing it here in a minute. His name was William Matthew Golden. Now, he does not sing for the Oak Ridge Boys. That's a different William Golden. But uh, Mr. Golden, uh, I tell you, Mr. Golden's, Mr. Golden's testimony convicted me. I've just got to be honest. I haven't even told my wife, shared this with her yet. But you know, a lot of times we're standing in line at the post office, or Lord forbid, the DMV. And you know, we could take a little New Testament Bible with us and get some study time in. It's, but, it, but a lot of times we're thinking, oh, I'm just, I just got to go, I just got to go. I just wish they would hurry up. Or traffic or whatever. There's many opportunities for us to read God's Word and to pray. And quite frankly, I was convicted. And let me, let me explain. I was reading in Philemon uh, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, when I read that as a youngster, I thought, well, Paul considers himself in prison to Jesus Christ. That's not what he meant. He meant he was in prison because of his testimony for Jesus Christ. He edited much of the New Testament from prison. And I used to read those things, and I used to think, well, what did Paul do? Did he fold his hands and say, woe is me? Well, let me read you just a few verses from 2 Timothy 4, beginning in verse 9. Listen to what it says in Paul's letter to Timothy. And he's asking Timothy to come see him. He says, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, Timothy. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica, uh, Cretans to Galatia, and Titus to Demathia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable me, uh, to me for the ministry. And now Paul, bear in mind, is in prison writing this letter, and he says this. He says, Timothy, in verse 13, the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and listen to what he says next, and the books, but especially the parchments. You see, Paul wasn't going to rot in prison right. in his downtime. He was going to study and learn, make the best of his time. Now you say, well, what does that have to do with our history of the hymns for this week? Well, this man, William Golden, wrote more than 20 hymns while serving an eight-year prison term in Mississippi. 20 at least 22 hymns. Now I know you're going to say, well, what was he in prison for? Where was he in prison? I don't have a clue. History's not giving us the answer to those things. But I wonder, can you imagine what the other prisoners must have thought and how this man, William Golden, must have affected their lives? Uh, he was born way back in 1878 in Mississippi. And it was also written of him that his only child at the time died young. And by the time he was in his 40s, he was there in prison serving an eight-year sentence. We assume he served all eight years, not sure. We're not sure of the crime, as we said. But listen, Mr. Golden made the most of his downtime. And it's not on your paper that I gave you your sheet music, but he wrote both the music and the lyrics. So I'm not sure what instrument he had, if he even had an instrument while he was in prison. But uh, 
He wrote a lot of songs such as On the Road My Savior Trod, Once a Blind Man Heard a Story, I'll Sing a Song in Jesus' Name, and the two best known songs of Beautiful Life and the one we'll try to do tonight. It was originally titled Where the Soul of Man Never Dies. Sometime later on after his passing, uh, it was renamed to Canaan's Land, I'm on my way. But uh, that's the only picture I can find up there of this man anywhere on the internet of the man uh, whose name, as I say, was William Matthew Golden. And he, he lived a, a kind of a tough life, I found out, uh, and I found a newspaper clipping uh, that someone had saved and put up, and I, I got a copy of it. He was killed in a traffic accident. He was riding on a trailer. Trailer came loose, careened into a vehicle, 56 years old. He left behind his wife and five surviving children. But I want, to, want you to know a couple of things from that article. I know you can't read it up there on the screen. But he must have reformed after he got out of prison because that article says that he had just completed running for local office to serve in his community. It also called him a revivalist. I like that. Amen. So you see, after he got out of prison, he kept serving the Lord evidently with his life in any way, shape, or form that he could. So at only 56 years of age, uh, Mr. Golden entered into eternity, but he left us behind some great songs to read. I will show you this before we move on. I want you to, you know, every, every, you know there used to be that old commercial on TV, what do you want on your tombstone? <laughs> Uh, that's a picture of his tombstone there, his marker, grave marker in Mississippi. And I don't know if you can read the bottom, gives the dates there. Very simple, small stone. It says, listen to listen what it, someone wrote on his tombstone and engraved forever. It says, lover and composer of gospel songs. Lover and composer of gospel songs. Hey, hey preacher, there's a sermon in there somewhere. That's a title. <laughs> Somewhere in there. So I tell you what, you've got your, your sheet there. I'll re let you remain seated. We're all going to sing this uniquely. We'll sing the first verse and then the refrain. And then we're going to sing verses 2, 3, and 4 without singing the refrain like it's one big stanza. And then we'll sing verse 5 and the refrain. So grab your sheet. I tell you what, this will get you thinking about home. Uh, where the soul of man never dies, also known as to Canaan's land, I'm on my way. To Canaan's land, I'm on my way, where the soul of man never dies. My darkest night will turn to day Where the soul of man never dies Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewells There'll be no tear-dimmed eyes Where all is peace and joy and love And the soul of man never dies a rose is blooming there for me Where the soul of man never dies And I will spend eternity Where the soul of man never dies A love light beams across the foam Where the soul of man never dies It shines to light the shores of home where the soul of man never dies my life will end in deathless sleep where the soul of man never dies and everlasting joys i'll reap where the soul of man never dies dear friends there'll be no sad farewells no tear him dies where all is peace and joy and love and the soul of man never dies 
I am on my way to that fair land where the soul of man never dies. And there will be no parting and where the soul of man never dies. Dear friends, there'll be no sad farewells, there be no tear dimmed eyes. Where all is peace and joy and love, where the soul of man never dies.